everyone, thanks for tuning in. So this video is gonna be on fish care. And what that means is how to clean your aquarium, understanding how different fish species interact, and making sure that you understand the difference between a freshwater setup and a saltwater setup. The big thing that you all have to keep in mind when watching this video is that I have a freshwater tropical fish aquarium, which means that I can use different water types with the fish that I have. So if you have a saltwater fish aquarium, you're going to need to do things a little differently than what I do in this video. Okay, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So when you're ready to clean out your fish tank, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have an appropriate sized water tank to hold them in while you clean the tank. And you need to make sure it's at the right temperature using your temperature gauge and that you have some aqua safe which makes tap water safe for fish okay so for my beta and his little buddy they like to be between 78 and 80 degrees and as you can see this water is 80.8 degrees on the back of our little aqua safe bottle here is the amount of how much you want to put into the water and i already know that amount so i'm going to go ahead and put some of that in there okay all right and now I'm going to be able to use my fishnet and catch my beta and his friend and put them in this tank while I clean them. So that's what I'm going to do now. Before I move on to the next step of moving my fish to their holding tank, I wanted to give you all a clearer picture of what I use to make tap water safe for my fish. Tap water isn't exactly the danger here. It is what it does to the environment that the fish live in that makes it unsafe for fish. Water that comes from your sink is treated with chlorine and may contain small amounts of metal. The chlorine will kill healthy bacteria that the fish needs to survive and cause an ammonia spike. This is why anytime you add water to your tank or put your fish in a body of water, you need to add some tap water solution so that you don't harm your fish. This product was available at Walmart and that's where I got it, but you can find this brand at any local store or any other pet store. Once I have my containment for my fish ready to go, then I will turn the pump off. Which just unplugs from the wall there. I'm going to leave the light on for myself. So then I can take the top off. And then I will be taking out all the decorations so that I can get the fish out. It's important to turn your pump off before you start moving things around in your tank so that you don't have water splashing everywhere. Remember, you are working with water and electricity, so it's really important that you keep safety in mind and unplug the pump so you don't put yourself or others in harm's way. When you go to catch your fish, try to not chase them around the tank too much. Fish get stressed when they are chased with the net and this leads to their immune system becoming weakened. You want to move your net slowly through the water and gently corner your fish so to limit the stress they feel and to not hurt them physically in the process. Patience is key to this part, so take your time, catch your fish, and quickly move them to your holding tank. Okay, so now that everything is out of the tank and my fish are in their containment unit, I'm going to use this Arizona tea jug, but you can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to fill up my jug with the water because the tank is too heavy for me to lift when there's a bunch of water in it. And I will keep doing this until there's hardly any water left and then I'll pick up the tank and then go dump it out as well. This is a really easy and safe way to make sure that you don't drop your aquarium and shatter it and put glass everywhere on the floor. Now that I have all the water out of the tank, I can move on to cleaning the rocks I use as the bottom portion of my tank. Rocks are a great natural decor addition to your tank, but it's important that you take time to research what type are safe for your particular fish. These rocks I have are safe to use with tropical fish, which is what species I have in my tank. Make sure you read the labels on the rocks you buy from a pet store and ask a qualified expert if your backyard rocks would harm your fish before you decide to add them in. Since it's too cold to wash my rocks outside that were in my aquarium, I have to do it indoors in my kitchen sink. These rocks are a variety of sizes, so I use a small cold strainer to keep them all together and to keep the rocks from going down my sink and potentially damaging my garbage disposal. You might need some help when you are scooping your rocks out of your tank. 
I like to have the water running as I do this to help the rocks gather on one end of the tank and then scoop the rocks into the strainer with my other hand. If you can, I would suggest having someone in your household hold the tank in the sink for you while you get your rocks out. And then I use a brush that is only for my fish that never gets any soap on it so that the fish particles don't get mixed in with the soap and so the soap doesn't hurt my fish when I put the rocks back in. Once you have your rocks washed and cleaned, you will need to do the tank. The tank can collect algae and other particles on the sides. I use the same sponge I did for the rocks to wash the sides down with some running water. Never use soap to clean your tank or any of your decorations. The soap will leave a residue on the walls of your tank and decorations that will be invisible but deadly. Only use water and a rag or sponge that is dedicated to cleaning your tank. Once you have thoroughly cleaned your tank, you need to dry it. I know it sounds silly to dry the tank when you are just going to put water back into it, but this makes it clear on the inside and out. It also is another safety measure to keep the tank from slipping out of your arms as you walk it back to its original resting spot from the sink. Once your tank is completely dry and back in its original spot, you can add your cleaned rocks back into the tank. You want to add the rocks back in slowly so that you don't break the glass on either the bottom or the sides of the tank. Make sure to spread the rocks out evenly on the bottom of the tank so that when you add your decorations back in, they sit flat in the tank and they aren't tilted. Now that your rocks are cleaned and so is your tank, you can now clean your decorations and the pump. Again, I use that same sponge from the previous portions of this video to rub my decorations under some running water. This helps get any algae or old food off the decorations that could harm the environment for the fish. If your tank has gotten really dirty and your t decorations need some extra TLC, you can soak them in a pan of hot water for about 15 to 20 minutes and that should take off the extra grime. Once your decorations are cleaned and are put to the side, then you can take the inside of your pump apart so you can clean it. My pump has a charcoal filled filter with a screen. I take both of these items out. Remember, you want to keep your cord out of the sink as you clean your pump so you don't damage it. I again used my fish sponge to clean out the inner workings of the pump and did a hot water soak for the screen. When it comes to the filter, I can only clean the outside because the bag is sewed together. Since it is a charcoal filled filter, it really only needs to be rinsed off on the outside and then put back into the pump. Activated charcoal is super effective at removing toxins from the water without stripping it of critical salts and minerals that the fish need to survive. To rinse it, I simply use my sprayer on my sink to wash the filter and that does really well as far as getting the excess grime off the outside. Once I have the different parts of the pump cleaned out, I reassemble it so it's ready to go once the tank has water back in it. Now that the rocks are back in and spread out, I put the clean decorations back in the, into the tank. If you have plant decorations like I do, it's best to put the rocks around the base of those decorations so that the new water you pour into the tank doesn't push them over. Once I'm ready to start pouring the water back in, the biggest thing is to make sure that I still have a temperature reading so that when I start putting the water in, it'll start to tell me if I need to increase the temperature of the water or downcrease it to make it viable for my fish. As I am pouring the water into the tank, I am keeping a close eye on my temperature. Beta fish and platys, which is what my orange fish is, thrive in water that is in a range of 74 to 82 degrees. I usually keep my faucet on a slightly cold setting and that seems to keep the tank water in that range. If you don't keep your water in an appropriate range, you can harm your fish. So it's really important that you keep an eye on how hot or how cold your water gets. The other item I want to note here is that both betas and platys are freshwater fish. Make sure you know if you have freshwater or saltwater fish so that you can use the right type of water when you are cleaning your tank and when you put fresh water back in. Once I have the water back in the tank and it's in that appropriate temperature range, I have to add two things. The first one is this AquaSafe tap water safe solution. Again, you would need to read the back of this product to figure out how much you might need for your tank size. I only have a 5 gallon tank, so I don't need to put in as much as someone who has a 10 gallon tank. The second item you need to add to your water before you add your fish back in is this safe start. 
This liquid helps create biologically active environments that allow safe reintroduction for fish. It has benefits such as removing ammonia and creates good starter bacteria that will help keep the fish healthy. Once I have added those two liquids, I then can turn the pump back on, put my fish back into the tank, and close the lid. This is what my tank looks like once it is all cleaned and put back together. Now I did want to mention here that you need to be aware of the personalities of the fish you choose and how they might interact together in a tank. I have a male beta and he is super lazy. He likes to sleep in Squidward's house and he rarely bothers my platy. Betas can live with other fish, but it's all about how big your tank is and what species you are wanting to have as a tank mate. Again, this is where doing research before you go shopping for new fish is really important. You want your fish to be as happy and healthy as possible, and the best way to do that is some homework. Thanks for watching, and remember to do your research when it comes to fish so that you can properly use the right decorations and pump that will help you keep healthy, active fish.